Good evening, everybody. At least it's evening here. Um, we are uh, here with the Visual Wilderness uh, team, minus Brent, unfortunately. He couldn't be here with us tonight, but we have uh, Jay and Johnny and a very special guest tonight, Lori Rubin. So I'm going to start off by um, letting Jay and, and Johnny introduce themselves, and then we're going to jump right into our discussion with, with Lori because she has some amazing stuff to talk, to talk about tonight. Um, I'm Verena Patel, and that's all anybody cares about. So let's move over to Jay. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm Jay Patel. You can find me at jaypatelphotography.com or visualwilderness.com or, or anywhere on uh, Google+, Plus, Facebook, uh, or just type my name on the internet. Johnny? Hey, I'm uh, Johnny Spencer. You can find me at johnnyspencer.com. That's J-O-H-N-Y. I know I spell it funny, but that's okay. That's me. And um, I just like to mention, guys, also with Visual Wilderness, I'm super excited. We have just topped the 200 members mark, and there's so much going on over there right now. If you haven't checked it out, it's the time to do so. Get over there. It's awesome. Ah, definitely. It's going amazingly over there. We're really happy with it. So let's find out who Lori Rubin is. Lori, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us what kind of photography you love. Well, I love nature and wildlife photography. And uh, I've been actually very serious about this about eight years ago when I started working for Nick Software. And I was the education uh, manager there. So I've had eight years of experience um, training and teaching people, doing webinars, post-processing, but I absolutely love photography. It's um, it's a part of me. Uh, I just uh, if I don't go a weekend or you know without photographing, I feel lost for the entire week. So I really love doing that. I love sharing uh, what I do as well on social media. I, I definitely know where you are with with. Uh, so let's see here. I think, um, and uh, I suspect that Johnny and. Um, that Johnny and Jay both feel the same way too. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, well, that's right. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your work experience. Where have you worked before? What have you done? Well, um, so I've years ago I worked for uh, Aldous Consumer Division that was bought out by Adobe, and at that time we were working on some filters called Gallery Effects that went into Photoshop. So I'm kind of dating myself a bit, but <laughs> I feel like I've come full circle because uh, as of eight years ago I worked for uh, Nick Software like I said, as an education manager, and then um, moved up to the Bay Area after Nick got acquired by Google and worked on the Google Plus Photos team. So it's been a great experience. Uh, all, my entire career has been software companies like Griffin Software, if you folks are familiar with the morphing software, mm -hmm. um, and some yeah. of the edutainment type programs, Disney, um, The Lion King, and um, Warner Brothers, Superman, and also Power Rangers. So I was pretty popular with my kids' school because <laughs> we made them beta testers. Uh, so <laughs> oh, that's so great. Yeah, I've always had a camera. I've seen your Nick um, educational program, and uh, I have to say I was really impressed. Uh, I mean, we, I've known about your work. Um, and we've known each other for a long time, but your the the way you set up the Nick Education Program was just fantastic. We were really impressed. Thank you. Yeah, we always felt it was an add-on to the program. Um, we had a whole education blog that I started at Nick, and that was a daily thing that we did. In fact, we had you and Verena participate yep. in that, yep. as well as our daily webinars. We'd have what two or three a day, and guest webinars and. Uh, we were very much into educating folks, so that that was a blast. Loved it. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable. It, it, it you've had such a fascinating career path. I, I I'm sorry that you were so bored all these years. <laughs> 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 so I, it's, you know. As as far as your boring boring life goes, you know we we know that there's a story that you you have, and it has to do with the Smithsonian. It, it's the Smithsonian story. So why don't you go ahead and tell us about that? Sure. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and try to uh, share my screen here so you folks can see a picture while I'm doing this. Awesome. So let me see if you let me know if you um, see the Nature's Best Photography picture up on the screen. Do you see anything yet? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, let me go back. Let me try it one more time. Let's do a screen share. 
And while Lori is uh, sharing the screen, I just want to remind everybody, that if you guys have a question for Lori, just put it in the chat box, and we will try to do our best to get it to her and see if she can answer some questions. Um, the screen share did flash really fast, Lori, so uh, whatever you were doing. Oh, but it didn't come up? It, it, uh, it came up, it flashed, up. and then it kind of disappeared. So try again one more time. OK, so we're going to try this again. <laughs> if not, I'm going to show you Amelia. So um, okay. that's my, my oh. copter. So well, we'll go. Jay, maybe you could pull that up on your Google page and see if you can um, show it on your screen. Because Lori showed a picture of that on Google today. Maybe if she can't share her screen for some reason, you can share yours. I can certainly do that. How's oh, this? You do you see? Uh, oh, we see it now. Awesome. You see it now? Yep. Yay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Just had a, there's yep, several ways of it. And <laughs> okay. Looks great. Yeah. Okay. So Thank what's you. The story? Okay. So this is um, uh, I 15 minutes of fame. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, keep going. You're. It's all you. Okay. Go ahead. So I'll go ahead and tell you a little bit about this. Um, about a year ago. Okay, about a year ago, I, I entered this contest, um, and it was funny because my friend uh, Piper McKay, she said, oh, "Laura, you got to enter this picture of the gorilla and the baby. You'll see it right here up on the screen mm -hmm. um, because it's very unique." And so, the Winland Smith Rice International Awards at the Smithsonian they do uh, once a year, and I happened to win the first place for the zoos and aquariums, which I'm really pleased about because I've spent almost every weekend at the uh, San Diego Zoo and Wild Animal Park and very much into zoo photography because I knew one day I'd get to go to Africa, which I did. And just by going to the zoo and playing with my camera and learning the behaviors of the animals, it made me that much better once I got out to Africa. So I always encourage people to get out there and practice, whether it's at a dog park, running dogs, or maybe it's um, the cheetah run at the safari park or whatever. But just you know, get out there and practice before you go out. Out that and is spend all that money. Fantastic advice. Uh, it's such good advice. Yeah. Uh, Jay and I are talking, to, and Johnny too. We're talking about a, a trip not too long from now um, to Africa. So if if we get out there, I may just take you up on that advice before we leave. <laughs> Make sure that I know how yeah, to do absolutely. it. Absolutely. <laughs> and we may just come and see you before we leave, saying, "Okay, Lori, teach us uh, what we need okay. to know." That's right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And then I'll just jump in one of your bags. Your your yeah. traveling bag. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Let's just bring Lori along, I reckon. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> this is, uh, One of the things that is fascinating. Is, go ahead, Lori. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was, okay. I was just going to say um, I actually got to present um, at the Smithsonian and talk a little bit about um, this experience. And I just want to tell you real quickly the background of this particular image. Um, and you'll see it here. What happened was it was a really bright and sunny day. I went to the zoo in my morning, you know, every Saturday, and I almost turned around and went to another exhibit. But Monroe, this little gorilla, is one of my favorites, and I stayed behind because that voice in my head, I don't know, I'm sure Jay and, and Brina and Johnny may have gotten this once or twice where it says just stay or turn around or, you know, do something. Um, so I got this voice in my head that just said, stay put. So all the crowd went away, and then I just happened to be positioned where the mother gorilla is looking at one of the zoo news publications. That's a picture of her baby, and then her baby sitting next to her. So it's just one of those, you know, you couldn't pose them better if you tried. <laughs> and that's what happened there. So, um, yeah, but I, I love this little guy. He's uh, just a joy to watch, and it's just entertaining. So that's great. That is uh, remarkable. And um, I thought I'd just go through. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go through and just show you some of my images for those of you who don't know my images or those of you who do and uh, give you a little background on some of these. Um, one example of what I like to do is, um, this is a zoo picture by the way. I like to make them so that you can't tell if it's at the zoo or if it's out in the wild. I like to take away the man-made type things in the backgrounds and, and around. So I really have to move my feet and position myself and wait for the right moment. And I'm all about these moments, these, these little moments that happen in front of your camera and you have to be ready to grab them. So this was uh, about an hour waiting. I knew there was a little flamingo chick on the other side. And when it finally got up on these wobbly legs, it fell over on the mom. And what looks like a tender moment is actually a little accident where he just tripped. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, these things happen. So I like to say it's, I call it um, a tender moment. But it's really 
did it, so don't tell anybody. <laughs> this actually got <laughs> first place at a, um, another award, uh, Nature's Best. So um, yeah. this is another. Um, this is one that I call a long way to grow, and I use Nick software for all these pictures, by the way. And this particular one, I used a filter called Midnight, where I just kind of really directed the viewer's eye from the mother flamingo looking down at the baby. So I was really controlling the light with this particular image. Um, I also like to, you know, find these little moments where, you know, it's just cute <laughs> and go, aww, you know, little brother, you know, hugging his other brother. I love the shallow. Um, and I wanted to show you too the difference. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> I just want to say yeah. I love the shallow. Oh depth no, thank you. Yeah. Um, it it really um, makes those animals stand out, and and it simplifies the background. I just love that about it, and I and I love what you did with the foreground too. You you created this sort of high key um, area around the the animals, and it really works. It really works. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. So go ahead. Um, I want to show you the difference. A color image and a black and white. This is, you know, a, a tiger. I was actually shooting through glass. This is at the San Francisco Zoo that I now frequent. Um, but I converted it to black and white. So you can see where you can take a color image. Um, I'm going to go back once more. This is in color. And then, um, you know, just making it, this is more like a fine art print. And there's high contrast. I love using silver effects because that high dynamic range that you can get between your blacks and whites. So now, instead of this, Okay, maybe it's a yawn. Actually, was a yawn. This looks like it's a, you know a roar, a growl. He's really expressive. So I like being able to convert some of these images to black and white just for that. Fantastic. Um, I also like to go to dog shows and take pictures of dogs. Um, this again is in preparation for whatever wildlife type adventure you're going to go on. Um, this is just you know kind of cute. He's in a little blanket here. But um, I love capturing all kinds of different animals. I think the more variety you get, uh, you're more prepared for whatever comes up. Um, this was actually from last weekend. I was uh, co-leading a workshop with my friend Piper McKay. And uh, she had these horses running through the water. This was early evening, so we got some beautiful light happening. And so all the students got a chance to play with fast shutter speeds, slow shutter speeds. You know, upping their ISO and, and just doing a lot of experimenting, and that's what it's all about. So that was a lot of fun. Also, did this uh, black and white conversion of a cowboy roping. We had some beautiful sunlight coming from direction from the right, and it kind of lit up the rope as he was uh, showing off his roping skills. So again, I like to I love color, but I also like to convert to black and white. Sometimes just to get kind of a different perspective. In this case, it really separates the horse and the rider from the background. Okay, um, I do landscape as well. Not like Verena and Jay, but <laughs> this, <laughs> in, uh, this was in Africa. I sometimes really like those simple scenes. Um, we had a, a rainbow and this single tree. I thought that was. Well, you know, I love it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you <laughs> very much. <laughs> um, and also simplicity and macro as well. This was actually at Mono Lake, and uh, mm -hmm. there was ice crystals, and it looked like a little flower. It just was a little ice crystal that landed on the stem. It was pretty magical. So I love looking at the wide picture, the big picture, and then really getting down close and intimate to these little tiny things that happen all around us. Um, so I wanted to, I'm going to be showing you uh, my quadcopter, Amelia, but this is one of the shots I took with her. She's a DJI Phantom Copter, and this is at Pfeiffer Beach in uh, Big Sur. And I just recently started flying her, I'd say about four months ago, and uh, <laughs> it's just amazing just the perspective that you get. Um, you know, uh, my friend Barry Blanchard's been flying helicopters for quite a while now, and finally when I started flying, it was like, why didn't I do this before? <laughs> um, so much fun. This really is. But it gets you to places um, that you would never be able to see. This is kind of a fisheye perspective that you naturally get when you're flying up and looking down, but there's software presets that Russell Brown put together that you can actually straighten out the horizon if you want. But in this case, I like that perspective and the curves and... Yeah. I like that. So. so are you one of those <laughs> tiny, tiny people down there on the beach? Uh, yes, I am. I think, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but I think I'm right down here. I see a white controller. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah uh -huh. I'm one of, <laughs> All right. The little person. Uh, that's great. Yeah, that's my little selfie. 
<laughs> selfie from way above. <laughs> That's quite a selfie. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this is another place. Um, this is uh, along the Davenport, I think, or Santa Cruz area, um, the piers. Uh, that it almost looks like Planet of the Apes when I first saw this. It was just amazing. But that's Russell Preston Brown from Adobe standing underneath one of those piers, and I just flew the copter up, and the shadows were just right. And it's just kind of fun. Uh, you you kind of see the world a little bit differently. The patterns that you don't see when you're just standing on ground, but when you're up there, you can really see the different patterns and textures. And it's just a great Another tool that we have uh, to photograph with. That's really yeah, cool. and I love this is that, that fisheye-looking lens too. It yeah. really is a, a cool perspective. It, yeah, it does. It kind of makes you look like you're on top of the world. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. makes the world seem a little smaller than it really is, doesn't it? <laughs> that's that's right. Cause it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is a baboon family that I I shot in Africa, and you know I had a color image, but by making the, this kind of a high key, dropping out the background, and then really bringing up the texture. So it almost looked like a pencil drawing. And by the way, this was all done in Silver FX, uh, Nick Silver FX. And it just, you know, kind of gives a different kind of fine art feel. So I really like experimenting and trying new techniques and then sharing those with others. This is just a fun one. I like to get down low and shoot um, from below with horses. Uh, they kind of have funny faces. In this case, these two have their ears cockeyed, you know, at the right angles, and yeah. they're looking down at me. But like, yeah. like what's you know, different? having a black and white conversion. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's just it's just kind of fun, you know, one of those fun images. And um, yeah, so let's see. Next, I'm going to show if we have time, I'll show you a little technique that I can do on these jackals here. Perfect. Is yeah. It for that. Back. We asked uh, Lori to come in and you know not only show off some of her amazingly beautiful photos, which I think you will all agree are are nothing short of jaw dropping, um, but we also asked her to you know take a few minutes and show us a technique that she really likes and give us sort of an idea of how she uses um, the software. Um, so she's she's going to walk us through one of her techniques, right, Lori? I am, but before I do that, let me just show you um, Amelia, my uh, oh, copter, yeah. before I forget. Um, I don't know if you can see her, but um, this is her, and she has new stickers, so you can see her name, <laughs> but she's really cute. Oh, There's a little awesome. camera. That's so my I camera. Um, she's not, she probably looks really big, but she's not. She's pretty small here, but um, she takes great pictures and video, and then I also have the controller. This is the really cool part too is this controller do you see I have my phone attached to it so there's software and I can look on the phone and I can actually take pictures from it so I can have a live view of um, oh, what's happening there this is how oh, I control that is her way. awesome I'm gonna have to figure out which of my children I should sell in order <laughs> to buy one of those I love it hey. they're all yeah, they're, they're going cool. hey. <laughs> hey. I with that. So, so I have a question before That's you fun. show us a technique I have a question what kind of camera do you have in Amelia this is um, a camera that DJI has. It's similar to the GoPro, uh, right. and in fact, some of these Phantoms, the Phantom um, 2 has ability to hook up your GoPro camera here and maybe a gimbal, but this is their camera. It does pretty well. So, so you know there's the, specs up on the DJI website if you're interested in checking that out as well. Cool. Yeah, so I will, um, um, yeah, I was just going to ask if you know the, the specification of the sensor and what it can and cannot do because I suspect that it's pretty difficult to the dynamic range to manage at that height with all the sky and the sun and everything it would be uh, fairly hard for most people yeah. to pull it off. Yeah, there's polarizers too uh, that you can stick on there as well. So. Yeah, well, and it seems like if you're if you're struggling with it, if you're not sure what to do with it, maybe the thing to do is to start out on an overcast day when you don't have to worry about really harsh um, sure. sh uh, highlights, really dark shadows. Then you can go out there. You can get some pretty neat photos. And when you're feeling a little more confident, then you can go out when the light is a little bit more difficult. <laughs> right? Well, the cool thing is, Yep. These shoot in RAW as well, so you can take a RAW image and oh, then cool. pull up the details yeah. in your highlights wow. and your shadows. So, uh, you get more of that dynamic range that way. So that's what I do. Fantastic. I want one. Okay, I'm going to try to 
I know you do. Everybody says that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to screen share now. Um, let's see here. I'm going to go here to... Okay, can you see my Photoshop yet? Uh, give me that second. Maybe not. Not yet. Okay. One more time. Okay, how about now? Yep. I see a black screen. I can see it. Okay. Oh, there it is. Yep, now I can, can see, see it. it. Yep. Okay, so um, there's there's many different ways that I uh, enhance photos, either you know with Lightroom, and there's a lot of filters and controls in Lightroom as well as in Photoshop. There's uh, programs that are plugins and standalone applications such as On One, Mac Fun, uh, Nick Software. Since I've been teaching and training Nick Software for so many years, I thought what I'd do is I would take an image like this and just show you how this is my original image. And sometimes, you know, with wildlife in particular, we don't want to really overcompensate too much. We want to keep the integrity of the original photograph, but we might want to help draw the viewer's eye to the subject. I'm a much a subject shooter, so I don't really need all this bright area over here. Maybe just kind of focus in on these two little jackal pups. So let me go ahead and show you real quickly. I um, took this into color effects and I used a couple filters. One is tonal contrast and dark and light and center. Kind of creates this nice vignette, darkens the center just a little bit. And then at the very end, I took Vavesa 2 and used control points to just darken down certain areas. So what I'm going to do here, let's go ahead and quickly, I'm going to go into color effects and hopefully you can see this coming up on my screen. I'll let you know when it's there for me and hopefully for you. We can see it. Do you yep. see it? Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Nice and fast. Okay. Now I know uh, Rena and Jay, you use um, the Nick software. On the left-hand side are 55 presets and over 250 effects, but I think it's almost infinite because each of these different filters, filter effects on the left, you've got these global adjustments and selective adjustments on the right-hand side, and they're all different. So you can really mix and match, stack filters, and create a look that you like, and even save it as a future preset. So what I'm going to do here, let's go ahead and we're going to take Tonal Contrast. It's one of my favorite filters. Um, what this particular filter does is it takes all the different um, dynamic ranges, such as the highlights, midtones, and shadows. You can go in and darken them, lighten them just by moving the slider left to right. And in this case, what I'm going to do is take the midtones down a little bit. I'll try not to go too fast so you can see, but it's actually kind of softening up the, the midtones in the background just a bit. Yep. And then maybe bump up the shadows just a tad. Okay, do you see that? Yeah, the changes are showing up really nicely on the screen. Pretty good? Mm-hmm. Excellent. Okay. And then let me just show you compare before and after. This is before. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. And then I'm going to let go. And then you'll see after. Just a slight yeah. change. Yeah. A little bit, little bit bringing up some of that nice detail in the fur. Um, you can even bring up the saturation if you want as well. So I'm going to add another filter here. And one of my favorite filters is Dark and Light and Center. I always get that question, what's your favorite filter? And I like to tell everybody, they're like my children. I can't just pick one. <laughs> I do have some that I use over and over again, but I love all of them. And uh, it's just it's fun experimenting because you never know what you're going to come up with. So I'll take this border luminosity slider, and what this does is I'll take it way down so you can see it creates a nice vignette around the edges. Correct. The center Correct. luminosity can either lighten or darken. I'm going to take it down just a little bit, and now some of the Nice colors are coming through, not quite as bright. And then I can also change the shape from circular to more of a elliptical type. So let me show you before and after here. This is before, without tonal contrast, without dark and light and center. And um, now we're getting an image that's more like this. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK. And we'll do one more filter effect so you can see what Vivesa does. And Vivesa controls color and light. And I really like using this program not only for its global adjustments, but mostly for the control points. And control points are the magic of Nick software. I'm going to show you real quickly how they work so that you understand. Every single one of the Nick software programs, including Snapseed, does have a control point. So I'll go ahead and click on control point. Um, let's go ahead and just place the control point on this little jackal's face right here. We've got the ability to change the selective area, and within that area, it's going to look for all the brightness, contrast, saturation, etc. And if I, to just to match that particular area. So let's suppose I want to bring up structure, and that actually increases the details, textures and details in this jackal. 
I'm going to go over to the right, and I'm going to show you the mask so that you understand how this works. So here I'm taking down the area of influence. So it's just looking at this area here. And hopefully you can see this. It's highlighting the areas that I want that filter effect to be applied to. So if you can remember, white reveals, black conceals. So all the black areas are being hidden, and white is revealing the particular filter effect. And as I drag this out, more similar areas within that particular image are going to be affected. So there's a lot of browns in here, and that's what's showing that light gray. So we're just bringing up the structure just a little bit on this little guy here. And let me put that back up. I'm going to put another control point down in the dirt area down below and just take down the brightness just a little bit. And I'm going to duplicate that down here. It's very slight and not a lot. So let's go ahead and see before and after. This is before and that's after. In fact, I can grab these control points all at once and just bring them all down if I really want to see a little bit more darkness. There we go. So now we've got an image that looks like that. So I'll go ahead and press OK. Let's take a look at our before image. Hopefully that's caught up so you can see that's before. It's a little bit overexposed um, and not quite as dimensional as I want it to be, but by adding the Color Effects Pro Tonal Contrast, that dark and light and center, and then just touching it up with Vivesa, um, I'm getting an image that looks like this. One of the things I like using about Photoshop is I can change the opacity of these layers. So if I feel like that particular filter is a little bit too much, I can bring it down just by choosing that opacity layer. So that's a really quick overview of, of uh, color effects. And there's many other programs with the NIC and, um, that you can use as well. But I did want to show you that. And let me go back here. That is fantastic. You know, Jay and I also use um, Photoshop and Nick software at times too. I use, I'm a huge fan of Silver Effects Pro, as you probably know. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the techniques that yes. you pointed out, they're so simple, they're so quick, and you have so many options. I think a lot of people don't realize that you can take the presets and then you can make adjustments from there. You know, I, act, I do that all the time. I go in and I say, I love this preset, but it's not quite what I want. So I start there, then I go in and make adjustments on the, on the right hand side in that panel, and uh, the difference is amazing. And then of course, as you mentioned, you can actually go in and, and create presets from that at that point, or from your own uh, settings. So a really powerful program, and of course if you, if you, if you pair it up with uh, Photoshop, the, the, your options are absolutely endless. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing that I like about uh, that is that it creates layers. It's a non-destructive editing process. So yeah. then you can go ahead in Photoshop and you can create additional masks and additional layers or control using opacity. Um, so you really have a really fine-tuned control um, over yeah. that, uh, especially if you know a little bit about Photoshop. Yeah, All right. it's, it's awesome. I'm yeah. a big fan of the Nick, Nick plugins too, and Viveza is just such an easy way. You know, it's it can get a bit tricky when you're trying to dodge and burn and do things like that. But what, mate, tell you what, the masking with them control points is just so powerful. I use it nearly for every image. Love it. Yeah, yeah. So okay. we're down to one minute here. We we've got to wrap things up. Um, Lori, do you have anything else you want to add in your in your 30 more seconds before we kick you out? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. And uh, if you want to um, follow me, I'm on Google Plus. Uh, just look up Lori Rubin or on Facebook. I have images by Lori. You should see on my screen there. Yep. And as well as I'm on 500px and uh, Flickr as well. So, yeah, and love what I do. And uh, my next more. workshop, I'll be in, in Yellowstone. Mm -hmm. There's a whole there? lot more beautiful images uh, like the ones you just saw, so uh, we highly recommend going over and checking out her, her work. And do you have um, any um, uh, workshop information listed on your website, or where can they find, where can people find your workshop information? Not yet. Okay. Yeah, i actually been kind of posting it um, as I've been going along on my Google+, Plus. so as we get closer, uh, I'll be posting stuff up there as well. Cool. So. A lot of fun things. Okay. Right. Well, thank you so much for coming out and talking with us tonight, Lori. We really appreciate having you. I think that all our our members at Visual Wilderness are going to be absolutely thrilled to to see your work and to hear your your uh, tips and ideas and suggestions. So, thank you.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. All right. Good night, everybody. Thanks for coming out tonight, and we will see you next time.